Hi, sixth grade. So the last story that we're going to read for this week is a story called Faithful Elephants. We've had many stories take place um, from many different countries and from many point of views um, in Europe. We've had, you know, some in Germany that were uh, part of um, like the Nazi Germany side. We've had um, some from places like Denmark and Poland that were kind of on the same side as the United States going against um, Nazi Germany. And the last story um, kind of tradi um, transitions away from that. And, and this is a story, it's called Faithful Elephants, and it takes place in Japan. And we also know that um, Japan was on the opposing side of the United States during the war um, as well. So um, it's another story. It's not a, it's not a happy story, I'm going to warn you. Um, but it's called Faithful Elephants, A True Story of Animals, People, and War. And what I'll do is I will read the story first, and then when I get done with the story, then I'll come back and I'll read this kind of summary at the end, okay? Just so you know that that's coming. <clears throat> All right. It says, let me turn to the side a little bit more. All right. The cherry blossoms are in full bloom at the Uno Zoo. Their petals are falling in the soft breeze and sparkling in the sun. Beneath the cherry trees, crowds of people are pushing to enter the zoo on such a beautiful day. Two elephants are outside performing their tricks for a lively audience. While blowing toy trumpets with their long trunks, the elephants walk along large wooden logs. Not far from the cheerful square, there stands a tombstone. And not many notice this monument for the animals that have died at the Uno Zoo. It is quiet and peaceful here, and the sun warms every corner. One day, an employee of the zoo, while tenderly polishing the stone, told me a sad story of three elephants that were buried there. Today, he said, there are three elephants in this zoo. But years ago, we had three different elephants here, and their names were John, Tonki, and Wanli. At that time, Japan was at war. Gradually, the war had become more and more severe. Bombs were dropped on Tokyo every day and night, like falling rain. Now they're kind of flashing back to that time. It says, what would happen if bombs hit the zoo, if the cages were broken and dangerous animals escaped to run wild throughout the city? That would be terrible. So therefore, by command of the Japanese army, all of the lions, tigers, leopards, bears, and big snakes were purposefully poisoned to death. By and by, it came time for the three elephants to be killed. And they began with John. And John loved potatoes. So the elephant keepers mixed poisoned potatoes with good ones when it was time to feed him. John, however, was a very clever elephant. He ate the good potatoes, but each time he brought a poisoned potato to his mouth with his trunk, he threw it to the ground. Kerplunk. You can see all these poisoned potatoes on the bottom. As it seems there is no other way, the zookeeper said, we must inject poison directly into his body. A large syringe, the kind used to give shots to horses, was prepared. But John's skin was so tough that the big needles broke off with a loud snap, one after the other. When this did not work, the keepers reluctantly decided to starve him to death. Poor John died 17 days later. Then it was Tonkey's and Wanley's turns to die. These two had always gazed at people with loving eyes. 
They were sweet and gentle-hearted. The zookeepers wanted so much to keep Tonki and Wanli alive that they thought of sending them to the zoo in Sendai, which was far north of Tokyo. But what if bombs fell on Sendai? What if the elephants got loose and ran wild there? What would happen then? Tonki and Wanli, too, were doomed to be killed at the Uno Zoo, just like the other animals. The elephant keepers stopped feeding Tonki and Wanli. As the days passed, the elephants became thinner and thinner, weaker and weaker. And whenever a keeper walked by their cage, they would stand up tottering as if to beg. Give us something to eat. Please give us water. Their small, loving eyes began to look like round rubber balls in their drooping, shrunken faces. Their ears seemed too large for their bodies. The once big, strong elephants had become a really sad shape. All this while, the elephant's trainer loved them as if they were his own children. He could only pace in front of the cage and moan, You poor, poor, pitiful elephants. One day, Tonki and Wanli lifted their heavy bodies, staggered to their feet, and came close to their trainer squeezing out what little strength they had left. Tonki and Wanli made their appeal. They stood on their hind legs and they lifted their front legs up as high as they could. And then raising their trunks high into the air, they did their bonsai trick. Surely their friend would reward them with food and water as he used to do for this. The trainer finally could no lo- take it, stand it no longer. Oh, Tonky, oh, Wanley, he wailed, and he dashed to the food shed. He carried food and pails of water to them and threw it at their feet. Here, he said, sobbing and clogged to their thin legs. Eat your food. Please drink. Drink your water. All of the other keepers pretended not to see what the trainer had done. No one said a word. The director of the zoo just sat very still, biting his lip and gazing at the top of his desk. No one was supposed to give the elephants any food. No one was supposed to give them any water. But everyone was hoping and praying that if the elephants could survive only one more day, the war might be over and the elephants would be saved. At least Tonki and Wanli At last, sorry, Tonki and Wanli could no longer move. They just lay on their sides, hardly able to see the white clouds floating in the sky over the zoo. However, their eyes appeared clear and more beautiful than ever. Seeing his beloved elephants dying this way, the elephant trainer felt as if his heart would break. He had no more courage to see them. All of the other keepers felt the same way, and they too stayed away from the elephant's cage. Over two weeks later, Tonki and Wanli were dead. Both died leaning against the bars of their cage, with their trunks stretched high in the air, still trying to do their bonsai trick for the people who once fed them. The elephants are dead. They're dead, screamed the elephant trainer as he ran into the office. He buried his head in his arms and cried, beating the desk with his fist. The rest of the zookeepers ran to the elephant's cage and stumbled in. They took hold of Tonki's and Wanli's thin bodies, as if, as if to shake them back to life. Everyone burst into tears, and then stroked the elephant's legs and trunks in sorrow. Above them, in the bright blue sky, the angry roar of enemy planes returned. Bombs began to drop on Tokyo once more. Still clinging to the elephants, the zookeepers raised their fist to the sky and implored, Stop the war! Stop the war! Stop all wars! Later, when the bodies of the elephants were examined, nothing was found in their washtub-like stomachs, not even one drop of water. With tears in his eyes, the zookeeper finished his story. These three elephants, John, Tonki, and Wanli, are now resting peacefully under this monument. He was still patting the tombstone tenderly as the cherry blossoms fell on the grave, like snowflakes.
Okay. Okay. Let's kind of get the back backdrop of this story. All right. To the readers, building a war without or sorry, building a world without wars has been the greatest human ideal throughout history. Unfortunately, it has never been accomplished. Politicians, diplomats, and military men possess the keys to achieving peace. The responsibility should not, however, be left entirely to them when the threat of nuclear war is as great as it is today. I believe it is absolutely necessary for each human being to work toward the prevention of war and the establishment of peace. The power of, individual, of an individual is small, yet we believe in the strength of collective human energy, just as we know a drop of water is the source of a great river. For the past 22 years, one of the things I have done is to read on television and radio and to include in my lectures the story of Faithful Elephants, which was written 32 years ago. During the last stage of World War II, Tokyo was often attacked from the air. At the city zoo, the keepers, with tears in their eyes, had to kill many of the animals for fear that they would run amok in the town if the zoo were bombed directly. Faithful Elephants describes how three elephants died at the Uno Zoo in Tokyo at that time. My act of reading this story seems trivial. However, 22 years of tenacious and continuous sowing of seeds of peace and the prevention of war are now bearing fruit. Strongholds of peace have been built in the hearts of adults and children when they realize the sorrow, misery, horror, and foolishness of war. The biggest gift adults can give to children is to make public the complete history of the different viewpoints about war and to help them consider how we can realize the human ideal. I hope this book will be read throughout the world and that seeds of peace and war prevention will be sown. I hope that those seeds will soon bud, bloom, and bear fine fruit. And that was written in 1988, so that's a while ago, right? Um, so that's the end of the story.